Welcome to Best Round, where three friends get together and break down their list of the greatest movies ever made. I'm Chris. I'm Mickey. And I'm Steve. And today we're talking about horror sequels. So Bring the heat, where we each break down our top three picks of the greatest films ever made. This week we're talking about horror sequels. Mickey, why don't you tee it off? Good. Uh, for my number three pick, I'm going to go with Nightmare on Elm Street Part 4. The nice. uh, reason why I chose that is I love the soundtrack. You know, the Vinnie Vincent Invasion song, Love Kills. That was awesome in it. Uh, great script, and I also felt like overall it was a good sequel in the front in the Nightmare on Elm Street uh, line. There, uh, what do you think, Chris? This pick hits close to my childhood. I gotta say, Nightmare Three, Four, and Five are in heavier rotation in my house growing up. I mean, me personally, I kind of always remember Four for the Freddy meatballs. Rennie Harlan did a great job with a script that could have used a bit more work, and little things like the time loop could have been done in a little bit of a smarter way. But while still one of the better nightmares to me, it's not as good as the original Dream Warriors or Freddy's Dead. Still a solid choice, though. Steve, what do you think of Nightmare 4? Um, I don't know. I, I kind of got a lump in 2 to, two to two, 3, 4. You know, all kind of feel like the same the same solid, you know, structure of the movie to me or whatever. I think it kind of starts falling apart a little bit. Well, I'd kind of agree with you on that. Maybe not so much with 2. 2 is definitely standing out as the redheaded stepchild of the Nightmare on Elm Street franchise. You think so? Yeah, I think so. But um, I kind of know what you mean. There's a little bit of a, you know, sort of, um, you know, sloppy middle section to the Nightmare franchise. And, you know, 4, I guess, does, uh, you know, have some of those defects. But uh, still, over and all, a really solid movie. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I also like the introduction to the Alice character in uh, that's true. So, yeah, that was character was solid. Uh, for my second pick, I'm gonna go with uh, Friday Thirteenth Part Seven, and the reason why I chose that one is for me. Spoilers: It was the first time that that uh, that uh, he actually Jason actually got defeated. Uh, so for me, that was a kind solid of classic movie. It was the introduction of Laura Park Lincoln's characters? Uh, she was the telekinetic yeah. in that, yeah. uh, which made that awesome for me. And again, I have to go with the uh, obvious soundtrack. Good stuff on there, too. Oh, great what soundtrack. What do you think, Chris? Definitely agree on the soundtrack. Great. This film was actually really, really close to being on my list. It's the first Friday the 13th film I ever saw. This was this movie is my gateway drug into horror films. The best looking Jason makeup there will ever be. The, you can see his spine when he's walking, and it looks like six films of damage shown properly. Hundreds of gunshots and machetes to the head. It's Kane Hodder's best performance as Jason. Um, it's the best protagonist that Jason ever fought up to that point, played by the amazing Lar Park Lincoln, who gets to spend a weekend with Bernie himself, Terry Kaiser, the only person to ever use a human shield to, to try and fend off Jason. Uh, the best kills of any Friday film. My only complaint is the criminally cut down version the MPA, MPAA forced on the world. John Carlo Beachler made a, made a gore masterpiece. If you can watch the uncut kills on YouTube, it's worth any Friday fan's time, guys. Awesome. Steve, what do you think of Friday 7? I love that movie. I love 7. I love her in it. Um, yeah. I mean, you got to think, like, what? Two Friday. Like, he's, he's, he's what? He's a supernatural entity, you know, in himself, right? Yeah. I never really explained that, but that's fine. Well. And two of the movies, they play out the idea that there could be other supernatural, you know, uh, premises, you know, out there as well, whatever, like, that that one, and Jason goes to hell. Jason goes to hell. Absolutely. Right got awful in yeah. comparison to us yeah and they you know taking it in that direction was just a really cool idea you know like how are you gonna fight jason you know? jason goes to hell's kind of like halloween 3 like it's you know it should have just been another movie because that movie's not about jason that's a body swapping sure. demon movie you Please, know jason was in it yeah point. he was in it like for a trailer at the beginning and a trailer at the end almost you know yeah trailer shots um yeah, that, that leads me to my uh number one pick you just mentioned it right now uh halloween 4 is my number one pick and nice. one of the main reasons is obviously the return of Michael Myers. You didn't see him in the third one, and it was a huge mistake. Although I love three uh, as a separate movie, as its own, I just feel that four was just a great strip. The introduction of Jamie was an awesome yeah. thing on there, and um, I thought it was a good return to the franchise uh, for, for the franchise. Yeah, what a comeback. Yeah, I definitely agree. This is another one that was really, really close to being on my list. It's the, clearly the best of all the Halloween sequels. Stays true to form, like you said. The last golden moment of the franchise for me, really, is this film. It's creepy, it's simple. Donald Pleasance and Daniel Harris both kill it in this film. Only downside for me is the ending, which you knew they just were never going to have the guts to follow up on in Part 5. 
I really wish Dwight Little would return for part five, but he wanted to do other things, and the Halloween franchise has been stuck like a dog chasing its tail ever since. Steve, what do you think of Halloween four? I mean, I I enjoyed how I enjoyed how the first and second, you know, kind of just rode into each other, you know, like uh, back to back, and I, same same goes for four and five. Right, I did enjoy that fact of it. Halloween uh, Five does have its some things that I really do enjoy. It's a very mixed bag for me. Yeah. Halloween Five, Five, I feel is too rushed. It was yeah. rushed. Four yeah, is really just, pure enjoyment. Yeah, the success yeah. of Four just made them try to you know get the new movie out quick, and yeah. I think the script suffered, and a lot of things suffered. I definitely agree. Jamie not being able to speak for most of the movie too was just kind of like. I don't even know what you did. Yeah, that was yeah. <laughs> just waiting out. Waiting it out one more year could have really made a huge difference in the uh, and uh, long have long lasting effects on the Halloween franchise if they had done so. Yeah, I just see the Cookie Woman scene where it does the most justice to that movie. <laughs> word word. Well, uh, so that uh, takes care of your list, except for your honorable men. Uh, your honorable mention. What's your honorable mention? Honorable mention for me is going to go to Ghoulies Two. It's a favorite of mine. I love that movie. Um, I can't make it the best movie of all time, but I certainly can put uh, honorable mention on that one. For me, the soundtrack is awesome. A good song by Wasp. Scream until you like it. Uh, you have the ghoulies running around. Awesome. And obviously, you have the great toilet scene with the ghoulie coming out. Terrifying. Very true. Which, is the one, which one did they go to college? That's that the ghoulie's three. Third That's one. the third one. And right? I like the third one, too. Because I, I actually love, yeah. spoke in that one. Too. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. 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 Right, yeah. Um, you know, I definitely have a fondness in my heart for Ghoulies too. It's a great '80s horror B classic. Um, Ghoulies definitely deserve their place in the film world with Gremlins and Critters. Unfortunately, when it comes to little monsters, Gremlins will always get top billing for me. So, uh, like I said, while this movie holds a special place in my heart, uh, Ghoulies go to Carl. Ghoulies go to college is where the party's at for me. Um, so uh, that takes care of Mickey's list. Steve, what do you got for bringing the heat? All right. So for my third choice. Number three slot here. Uh, it's a bit of an odd one, but I'll tell you why I went with it. It's VHS two, and here's the reason why I went. Huh? I went with it because it completely came out of left field as just a really surprisingly well done, genuine horror movie. You know, in itself or whatever. It's got you know, it's got its its kind of loose plot. You know, like overall, you know, what's going on? What these people are are taking in these, you know. Four, I believe, it's four short stories, all done by different, you know, uh, you know, really, really well established uh, horror movie directors that you know each, you know, each take on different one of these short stories, and uh, and absolutely killed it. You know, like uh, one thing I can't stand, and I think it's been overdone, to death, is found footage, and you know, POV cam, and you know, like Blair Witch, all that, yeah, Blair Witch, Paranormal Activity. Uh, shit, They're like you yeah. know, it's 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 old and it's whatever. They found a way to do that uh, better than I've ever seen it done before. I will agree with that and, definitely. And it's genuinely, it's genuinely uh, scary. Like they're they're, they're really every story. All in all, the film's kind of a mixed bag for me. The shorts range from okay to great, which makes this just like most of the other short story anthology style horror films. It's kind of a modern version of Creep Show, Cat's Eye, Tales from the Dark Side, Nightmares. But it is jam-packed with talent and creativity, and I definitely look forward to seeing what some of these filmmakers do in the future. Mickey, what do you think of VHS 2? Um, really, for me, it was just an okay movie. Yeah. I really can't speak too much to it. Um, these kind of movies never really uh, catch my attention. They're one of those ones that like, I just kind of bypass. I think that some of these things are just done for the sake of gore, which you know, I do love gore and stuff uh, like that, but uh, I don't know. It just gets lost on me. Yeah, uh, I could definitely understand that. You yeah, know, it's uh, it's you know, I will say I have a certain reluctance to a lot of the the modern horror efforts as well. I'm more of a classics guy, if you couldn't tell. Um, but uh, you know, I will say if you're gonna watch a new horror movie, this one's not bad. There, you could definitely do a lot worse than VHS too. Um, I don't know if it's you know one of the greatest horror sequels ever made for me. Uh, you know, but uh, that's why it's on Steve's list and not mine. Um, so what did you have uh, slotted in as your next pick, Steve? All right, here's another odd choice, and uh, this is an odd choice because technically I'm not sure if it's even considerably a sequel, but it's got premise for it. Uh, Silence of the Lambs. You know, it's a absolute ridiculous classic in the genre itself. Um, and despite the fact that I believe it's technically 
follow up of an adaptation from a novel that they came and you know and turned into a film that absolutely bombed and has more than nothing to do with Sons of the Lambs itself, really, besides introducing his character played by a completely different actor. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna just go ahead and uh, say it's a sequel for the sake of uh, for the sake of this list. Well, I definitely agree that the film is a sequel one way or another. Uh, mm-hmm. While not an official sequel to Manhunter, uh, they did make Red Dragon as well, which serves yeah. as a prequel to Silence of the Lambs. So, and whether you, yeah, and Hannibal and stuff. You know, the way no matter where you slice it, this film's a sequel to something. <laughs> um, but uh, and it's also, I mean, it's filled with iconic lines, iconic performances, mm-hmm. top shelf directing. Uh, uh, Academy Award that yeah. year won Best Director, Best Actor, Best Picture, Best Actress, and Best Screenplay. Yeah, pretty much swept the Academy Awards, which is a rare feat for any film, especially for a horror film, making this kind of the golden rung of success for the genre. Mickey, your thoughts on uh, Sounds of the Lambs? Uh, for me, I mean, I didn't really like this one either. You know, and as far as a, a pick, too, like, I kind of like, I mean, I can understand you saying that it's a sequel or a prequel or whatever the case may be, for, but for me, it was the first of the any time we saw Hannibal Lecter was Sounds of the Lambs. Well, so, man, Manhunter, but. Right. Yeah, well. Yeah. It just, you know, wasn't. But I see what you're saying, yeah. yeah. As Anthony Hopkins. <laughs> Correct. Yeah. No. yeah. I guess maybe I needed, like, a Silence of the Lambs Part 2. Yeah. <laughs> so. Right, right. It's so bad that I'll take another one, please. <laughs> in order for me to say, like, yeah, that's definitely a sequel. It was needs that, to have a 2 in the back of it. Is that what Hannibal was? I'm, I can't even remember. I'm, now I'm losing track. I might even be wrong that Red Dragon was the prequel. No. I hope not. We'll I annotate it. Wow. Uh, yeah. we'll, we'll annotate it if we're wrong. You tell us you in can. the comments. Yes, that's right. Could that's, be wrong. Could be wrong. You tell us. Mm-hmm. I'm definitely wrong, so. Uh, so what's your number one pick? My number one pick was one of my favorite films of all time in general, just so I haven't fallen into this category, and that would be Army of Darkness. Uh, I'm a massive Bruce Campbell fan. I love the whole series. Uh, uh, and Army of Darkness is, I guess, technically still falls into the horror movie genre. Oh, definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, so... um. Well, I can't disagree there. It's the perfect conclusion to arguably the best trilogy in horror history. Uh, it's hilarious. It's action-packed. It's got Harryhausen-style effects that kick ass. Bruce Campbell, one-liner perfection. Just a satisfying, feel-good experience from beginning to end. Probably the most feel-good horror film ever made. Right, and they really took, took, uh, took a gamble on that. You yeah. Know, coming off of Evil Dead, remaking it, and then going in that. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. A huge gamble. Mickey, what are your thoughts on Army of Darkness? I love Army of Darkness. It's one of those, I, for me, I think it, it was the first uh, of those movies that I saw in the theaters, as far as, like, I didn't see Evil Dead 1 or 2 in the theaters. I saw Army of Darkness. That was the first one. Right. Um, so I loved it. Um, I would go with 2 over Army of Darkness, as far as sequels go, but I still love it. Yeah. Good word. All right. So what's uh, your honorable mention for the day, Steve? All right. Uh, I was gonna say, and again, like I don't mean to, you know. I want to say that that I love horror movies and I love the genre as a whole. I just want to premise this a little bit, but it is one of this is a genre that I can safely say that I will watch anything in that comes out as a horror movie. But I am more than likely nine out of ten times expecting to be disappointed. And that's where mm. the honorable mention really comes into play because horror is kind of like jazz in that way. Really, yeah, exactly. You know, exactly. Like I love it, and I want it to be good so much, and it never usually is. It's like a lot of it, and some yeah, right. great percentage of it is bad. I agree. An exception would be Freddy vs. Jason. Both those, both of those those franchises had gone seriously down. Oh yeah. Prior, yeah way down there prior to making this movie and they came out with this and they somehow you know pulled it off you know i, I genuinely thoroughly enjoyed that movie surprisingly uh i have to agree i mean you can take this film as a spin-off you can take it as a crossover you can take it as a friday sequel or a nightmare sequel but however you take it this film is so much fun and so much of a promise fulfilled by hollywood the land of broken promises uh, I dreamed about this movie since I was like four years old, and this was just about as good as Hollywood could have possibly made it. It's a fantastic curtain call for Robert England, gives an incredible performance, but I have to say, no disrespect to Ken Kurtzinger, he did a fine job, but it is so fucking criminal that Kane Hodder didn't play Jason in this film. 
His performances through movies, good and bad, elevated the character to the true icon that it was, and only then did he become the perfect match for Freddy. So that's one area that the film always disappointed me, but other than that, I gotta say, it really was a great movie. Why didn't Kane Hodder play? Uh, so the New Line executives uh, said, forced it to director Ronnie Yu. They said, we want a new Jason. We want a different Jason. We don't want Kane Hodder again. I'm guessing it was to save money. You know, they can say whatever they want. We want a taller guy, or we want this guy. Like, it's all bullshit. It's probably to save money. I know they couldn't, they couldn't find anyone to direct that movie for a long time. I know they went to, like, West Well, they went through, like, 15 it. scripts. They couldn't find anyone to write that movie for a long time. There was a New Line executive whose name I forget, um, but I'll put it on the bottom of the screen. Um, and he actually um, started entering a New Line with the sole purpose of trying to steer the ship back to... You know, to try and write the course of that movie because he read all the bootleg scripts that were floating around, uh, bootleg copies of the actual Hollywood scripts, and they were just terrible. Sure, um, yeah. yeah, everything from like you know, Freddie, uh, you know, molested Jason at the camp to oh, like yeah. he dated Freddie's mom, Jason's mom, and whatever. You know, it's horrible, horrible stuff. Um, yeah, I thought, you know, honestly, like I thought the script was really good. Whatever they you know, when they came up with was good. I thought the 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 product that was then it was was good originally when i actually heard about freddy vs jason i was at a horror con and they said uh when they were talking about this movie that depending on where you saw this movie there was going to be a different ending i heard so, about this like, yeah, if you like went clue. to see it in like one movie theater jason one really you saw it in another one freddy one and a part of that was going to get tied into the marketing so that you know obviously you, you would want to see another version of the end yeah. kind of an awesome so idea. i, like I that. Liked that premise yeah, yeah. and then when we finally got the movie and that wasn't the case i was a little bit like oh what happened almost... i was still anticipating going to another movie theater to see like, <laughs> yeah. a different ending <laughs> i almost oh i'm sorry i was, I was gonna say wasn't there, wasn't there talk originally uh, a lot go, going around about the idea of uh Freddy vs. Jason vs. Ash? There was definitely talk of that. I've read interviews with Bruce Campbell talking about that and that it never really got that far other no. than the conceptual stage. Like, I don't think they hired a screenwriter or anything like that. No. Um, but I think Sam Raimi wanted to be involved. And again, when someone uh, of his caliber wants to be involved, you're talking about a certain dollar amount. And I think they were a little cheapish. And I think there was a rights issue, too, because... That's why Army of Darkness was called Army of Darkness and not Evil Dead 3. I oh, think really? that he had the rights to the characters and everything. He didn't have the rights to the name Evil Dead. I could be wrong about that, though. Um, I guess that only leaves me. So breaking it down with my top three lists. Coming in at number three, I have one from my childhood. Friday the 13th, part six, Jason Lives. It's the most fun of all the Friday the 13th films. The first time you ever get a supernatural Jason. The most continuity of any Friday the 13th film following up on the Tommy Jarvis storyline. It's got great Jason kills. It manages to do all this with minimal gore and no nudity. It's the first self-aware horror film. Kevin Williamson actually cited it as a big influence for Scream. It's got a killer soundtrack. Fucking Alice Cooper, Man Behind the Mask, Teenage Frankenstein, John Travolta's nephew crashing in Winnebago, and Darcy DeMoss' is absolute cocaine DeLorean 1980s perfection. Mickey, what do you think of Friday 6? I couldn't have said it any better. Friday 6 was really good. And, uh, I mean, it came close between 6 and 7 for me, but ultimately I chose 7, but we're talking about 6 here, and 6, I mean, like you said, I can't tell, can't talk enough about the soundtrack. Soundtrack alone is, is awesome, and Darcy DeMoss, oh my god. Oh yeah. I, I was so in love with her. Oh yeah, still am. The best! best. Most definitely. Steve, your thoughts, Friday 6? Minimal gore and no nudity. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. no. Okay. I guess that really sums it up for Steve. I need, um, I need at least a few, a few nipples and, and something to, something to cringe at in my in my Friday movie. Splice in some nipples for Steve. More nudity, but just make them like gore. hairy guy nipples. So I need it's smut. a big I need smut. <laughs> yeah. Not enough smut for Steve. Well, no, not in, not in six. Not in six. All right, you can just um, go on. All right. Uh, yeah, yeah. Continue. Continue. Go okay. So. Uh, Coming down to number two on my list, we have Bride of Frankenstein. Now, this film is maybe the very first sequel to arguably surpass the original in quality. It's got excellent continuity, picking up immediately after the first film ended, which is a thing that was way ahead of its time as well. Boris Karloff is even better this time, portraying a deeper and more complicated monster. It's more iconic than the first film, more classic horror moments. It's a totally believable way to follow the stories of these characters psychological thriller, a morality play, a Shakespearean tragedy, and a horror classic all rolled into one. Steve, your thoughts on Bride of Frankenstein? Yeah, I'm not going to lie to you. It's been a while. It's been a while. It's been um, I do remember 
I, what I do remember about that movie is that it was there was a, there was a lot more involved. There was a lot more depth. There was a lot more story. There was a lot more, you know, like uh, to it than your traditional like kind of old school, you know, monster mash kind of movies. You know, like um, but yeah, there's not much more to speak. On. All right, yeah, Mickey. Bride of Frankenstein, your thoughts? Um, I mean, I like the movie as a whole, Bride of Frankenstein. Um, I like Frankenstein as a character as well. I just, you know... The monster, the, yeah. the doctor, or the... Mrs. Monster, the monster, yeah. the, you know, it, it's always a classic character. Um, and I can't really speak too much more about it. It's just it's one of those movies that are they're good, and I, and I just, you know, I watch them once, and I leave it at that. All right, I got you, I got you. Sorry, I have thought, a question about second. Bride of Frankenstein. Uh-huh. Okay. So if I'm remembering correctly, she's she's created to give him a partner to give him a partner because of you know Sloan Victorious puts Dr. Frankenstein up to it. Yeah. Yeah. Victorious. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Puts him up to it. Yeah, he puts him up to it, and she's gonna be eventually the monster's bride. You know, at least so the monster wants. But then he has that really deep and classic line. She hate me. Yeah. And yeah, then yeah, you know we belong. You no, know, it's just that that's to me that's a Shakespearean tragedy on a level that you don't get in a lot of horror movies. And this is a film that's like 80 years old now. You right. know, no, it's yeah, uh, That is deep for that particular... It really is deep, then, yeah. yeah, for the time. You know, this is when, you know, it was, like, it was advanced just to have sound in your movie, you know. Um, but at any rate, uh, I think we've pretty much set our piece on Bride of Frankenstein. Uh, moving down to my number one pick, uh, to me, the greatest horror sequel ever made. It might sound strange to you guys, but... Uh, I have to go with 1988's Fright Night Part 2. Um, it's creepy, it's funny, it's gothic, it's fun. You got horny werewolves bowling with human heads, cross-dressing tramp vamps on roller skates. You got more fun with Peter Vincent than Fright Night 1. Better storyline for Charlie. More fun with those two being the great duo that they are. Uh, it's a perfect take on how to follow up the original classic. Killer effects that were actually way ahead of their time. Another great Brad Fidel score. Julie Carmen is an amazing villain as Regina, a worthy successor to the great Chris Sarandon. Uh, one of my favorite cameo roles of all time by the amazing 80s legend Josh, R Josh Richmond. I always daydream of a third movie where his character breaks out of the asylum and teams up with Peter, Charlie, and Alex to fight an epic gang of vampires somewhere. But sadly, we lost any hope of that ever happening when the Menendez brothers killed their father, I've studio president Jose Menendez. Mm -hmm. Any hopes of a Fright Night franchise died for a long time at that moment. Um, but, uh, Mickey, what are your thoughts on Fright Night 2? I absolutely love Fright Night 2. It's one of those good old uh, classics that you can watch over and over again. Um, I can't really speak anymore on to, to it. I think you all your notes seem to be like, <laughs> hit, hit a home run with, with me. I mean, it's just a classic, classic movie. and it's a, it's a good movie. I mean, if anybody hasn't seen it, you have to see it. I mean, yeah. it's just classic. Definitely. Yeah, Friday Night 2 is by far my favorite out of, you know, obviously the first two. And the, 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 oh, yeah, the, the remakes. remakes. Yeah. You know, whatever. Who's to say I'm not a fan? Yeah. yeah. I don't mind the remake. I, don't mind, I didn't mind the remake. It was cool either. that Chris Sarandon had a cameo, but other yeah. than that, for me, it was. And I like Anton Yelkin yeah. in general. Um, you know, it was, well, it was well done for a remake. Of, right? as, as well done as you could, you know, be expected for a remake of Friday. Yeah, which ne never true. needed to happen in the first place. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Um, yeah, I don't know. To me, it's just, you know, probably the most underrated horror sequel of all time. It's not the most underrated horror film of all time. Like, it's so yeah. underrated that it's fucking criminal. This is a great movie. Yeah, yeah. It is a really good movie. So then, uh, leaving off of my honorable mention, um, this uh, might sound a little funny, too, being that it's a horror list, but I gotta say, uh, James Cameron's Aliens uh, is definitely the honorable mention for me. Uh, the only reason it's off my main list is because it's technically more of an action That's film. It's a sci-fi. It's a sci-fi. The original was a horror, so it's a sequel to a horror film. It's a horror sequel. I just had to talk about it, though. This movie's way too good. Uh, you know, It's no, not it's only true. one of the best horror sequels of all time, it's one of the best sequels of all time. One of the best films of all time. I mean, Sigourney Weaver is the ultimate screen heroine in cinema history in this film. Uh, earning an Academy Award nomination, which is still a touchstone for the genre to this day as well, uh, as Silence of the Lambs. Mm. Michael Bean kills it as Hicks, Bill Paxton is fucking perfection, even Paul Reiser nails it as a slimy corporate scumbag. We've got more xenomorphs, better xenomorphs, better chest bursters, better face huggers, killer cinematography, effects that hold up ridiculously well, better story, bigger scope and scale, the queen, the power loader, and the fact that I still get goosebumps every time I hear the line, Get away from her, you bitch! Guys, your thoughts on Aliens? Um, for me, I mean, I like aliens. Um, uh, again, I'll I'll go with 
like uh, same kind of comments I had about Silence of the Lambs. I didn't really see this as being um, um, a horror movie, though. I mean, this just me. I, I think of it. I mean, it could be a horror movie, but also I just feel it's so much ingrained in like sci-fi that the I mean, alien aspect it, it, for a sci-fi movie, it is inherently more frightening than than most of these other movies on this entire list. I'll say that. Like, it is a genuinely scarier movie as a whole. At least when I was a kid. You know I mean? like, oh, definitely, yeah. yeah. As you know, more so terrifying. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It was definitely an edge-of-your-seat kind of film. When I watch it to this day, I'm still, like, in suspense, you know? So, yeah, we'll give it to you. All right, very cool. Um, so that breaks down our solo list. In all seriousness, if I was in the human centipede, I would want to be in the front. Well, yeah, man. Uh, uh, I mean, come <laughs> on. <laughs> Are you calling it now in case we end up in that scenario at some point this evening? I don't want to know. I want to stake my claim. Uh, yeah, you let the you let the crazy. Dog. I forgot what a human centipede was for a second there, yeah. and I'm like, why does he want to be in the front? I thought like, a lot about this. I'm yeah. thinking maybe middle. No, 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 no front. I'm, no, I'm, right? No, or middle? All right. Somebody oh, okay. else is tasting my shit. <laughs> You're totally gonna be able to tell which takes we were the ones we were just laughing because our faces are all gonna be red. I so like what this. are you taking? <laughs> <laughs> I already claimed the. Yeah, uh, I, mean, I got midsies. I got want. Midsies. I don't want to miss out on any of the action. You know? <laughs> so you getting straight up ass, ass to mouth, <laughs> ass to mouth, ass to mouth. <laughs> oh, the double ATM. Okay. <sighs> The last segment of our show is, of course, called Best Around. And the way this works is we each give an upvote, a downvote, and a neutral vote to each other's list to help us determine what break down what the best horror sequels of all time are. So the votes are in, and we've concluded that the best horror sequels of all time are Fright Night 2, Halloween 4, and Army of Darkness. Hallelujah! Holy shit! Where's the Tylenol? Once again, I'm Chris. I'm Mickey. And I'm Steve. Be sure to tune in next week when we'll be talking about Best Later, guys.